Do people see what I see? Do they see me? Or do they stare just looking through thin air? Do some even care? It hurts me to know people show how they look at me, imitating me self-centeredly. You see, some don't realize that when they criticize my eyes, it can hurt. It's not worth the pain, that's not my gain, that used to be my enemy, my eyes. But Christ paid it all on Calvary as a price to know. He paid it all and it's all to him I owe. Do some people realize that these are mine and if you don't mind, I love them just fine? Did you know that God made me his way? So I'm beautiful no matter what you say. These eyes were made to see. That's who I'll be, me. I was 12 years old when I wrote that poem. You see, I was that child who would run into the washroom once class was in session. And it was in that washroom that I would break down and cry because I was being teased by my classmates. It all began when I moved to Canada from England. I was a confident, or you could say a precocious, seven-year-old, one who was taught to believe in herself. I saw myself as a leader. But as a newcomer to Canada, everything had changed. It was not the loss of friends, family, food, or even the English pound that hurt the most, but rather the painful shock that I was being teased, isolated, and excluded by my own classmates. A feeling only experienced or known to those who know what it means to be bullied. They would say, ew, you have really big eyes. Why do you look like that? You're ugly. Why do you sound like that? And this was something that I had to face on a daily basis. And although I looked confident on the outside, no one knew that it was in the washroom that I would be crying. I know we've all heard the saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me but they do. Did you know among 35 countries, Canada was ranked the ninth highest in terms of bullying amongst 13 year olds? And that 47% of Canadian parents have reported a child victim of bullying. Did you also know that 40% of Canadian workers experience bullying on a weekly basis according to Statistics Canada? There continues to be a body of research that shows that those who are victims of bullying are more prone to experience post-traumatic stress, anxiety, depression, peer rejection, and even academic difficulties. When I first heard these statistics, I was completely shocked of how high the numbers were. But really, what do these numbers mean to a person who has to face the bully on an everyday basis? Or what does this mean to the person who is forced to sit in the library and try to enjoy the company of the very person that they have grown to hate themselves? And so for anybody who's experienced bullying, you would know that there comes a breaking point where you can take no more. And it is at this point that it will either break you or you will break through. And so I had come to my breaking point. I was fed up. I had told my mom everything. I hate people, I hate school, but most of all, I hate myself. But I don't know why I told my mom, honestly. Because where I was looking for somebody to comfort me and to feel sorry for me and to even make me go to another school, my mom was nothing like that. And so my mom loves challenges, and so she turned to me and said, Write. Write about your experiences to help somebody else. At that time, I thought that was the most ridiculous thing I had ever heard. I was looking for sympathy. I was looking for a new car one day. <laughs> but she wasn't going to give me that. And so, I began to write. Who was I to argue? Because at the end of the day, Bill Watterson said, all mothers are the necessity of invention. And so, I wrote, when I should have listened to San Saninger's quote, who said, all mothers are slightly insane. But anyway, 
I wrote. And I noticed that I was not the only one. And so now it made sense to why 47% of Canadian parents could have reported a child victim of bullying. But what about those who kept silent? What about those who have never said anything? By 14 years old, I co-published my experiences with my sister, and we called the book Getting to Know Me. We then created an organization called LOL, Love Our Lives. Why LOL? Because at the time, LOL was the hot word. Everyone was saying LOL, laugh out loud, or LOL, lots of love. But I wanted to know, as somebody who had been bullied, how could I laugh out loud or give lots of love if I didn't even love myself? And so we created LOL, Love Our Lives. And we, this sparked an interest for me to give talks and to hold workshops. And soon became, came the awards and the recognition. But nobody knew that by myself, there was still a voice telling me, you're ugly, you're stupid, and you've got really big eyes. But I kept helping girls and I kept spurring them on. And after every session, I would notice that there would either be one mother or grandmother who would whisper in my ear, that was for me. I'm still hurting. As they left quickly, not wanting to enter into a conversation. And yet, like a dramatic movie or a scene in a movie, I was left to feel their tear upon my cheek as they walked away, leaving it, as it were, unfinished business. Yes, we know bullying is wrong. Yes, we know bullying hurts. Stop the bullying. I know we've heard it in our schools. We've seen it on media. We've seen it on the billboards. We know how the cycle of bullying works, that the person who was once a victim of bullying can morph herself into the bully who then bullies others. But take a moment and ask yourself, have we ever thought about the victim and the bully being the same person? What I have learned is that the words of the bully has the power to be inscripted and inscribed on the minds of the victim, that she repeats those words over and over and over to herself, and it never stops. You're ugly, you're stupid, and you've got really big eyes. There are times when incidences or even smells or flashbacks occur that trigger feelings as if it happened yesterday. And like a shadow, it follows her into relationships, into the workplace, and even when making basic everyday decisions. For that grandmother who whispered in my ear, she was saying, they stopped the bully so many years ago, but no one restored the girl within me. And so, yes, bullying is a continuum that goes on and on and on and on. And we have often focused on the external bully, but we have often forgotten the internal bully. And so today, I work passionately for girls to be restored into the woman that they were born to be. It is my passion that if we intervene in a girl's life at a young age, then, then we can actually rewrite the script that had been written originally by the bully. So that means that if we restore the seven-year-old or the 12-year-old, then when the girl is 17 years old and a guy comes to her and says, you're beautiful, but in the same breath tells her she is nothing without him, he will never be able to trigger the words of the bully. Why? Because we have rewritten the script from within. Or what about that boss who uses exclusionary practices to make you feel stupid and incompetent? She will never be able to bring up self-doubt or self-hate. Why? Because we have rewritten the script from within. And so it is my passion to speak about girls restoring the woman because it's such an important part of a woman's life. And I truly believe that if we are able to restore the girl and teach her that her experiences are for a purpose, then the girls that we grow up, the girls that we see in our schools, in our homes, in our families, will be strong women who understand that they will not allow bullying to be or to detect their lives.
And so how do I know this? Well, the same big, ugly eyes that I had learned to hate are now the same big, beautiful eyes that I love today. And I would be lying if I said that I wake up every morning and I look at myself and I say, wow, you're so beautiful, or you're so smart, or you can handle this. But no, what I have to do is wake up every morning and rewrite the script from within. I have to wake up every morning and continue to tell myself, Leanne, you are beautiful. You're going to make it. You have a purpose and you are going to help people. And so now I stand before you and I ask you the same question that I asked almost nine years ago. Do you see what I see? Do you see me? Thank you.